Welcome to the MBU Football Coaches Show. My name is Guy Danoff. I'm here with Coach B. Coach B, last week you went on the road. Kind of a close game. You were at Missouri Valley, and at halftime, the Spartans were leading 13-7. to Eventually ended up losing 35-20. Um, to Kind of, you know, recap some of that game, because in the first half, it seemed like the Spartans were on a roll. Yeah, we played a really good first half. Um, probably one of our best halves collectively. You know, we, uh, outside of... Uh, we did give up a big punt return, but outside of that, special teams was uh, doing a pretty good job. Offensively, you know, we were moving the ball. We we started with the ball that day, yep. um, moved the ball right down the field. Uh, I made the call to go for it on fourth and two, I want to say. Uh, we were definitely in field goal range, I want to say, down by the 10-yard line. But, you know, just wanted uh, – uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on, on short yardage situations and thought we had a good opportunity. And I really th felt like it was important for us to get six on the board, yep. especially as, as good of a drive as, as we put together. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, weren't able to convert on that. But then, you know, defense came out, got stops. Uh, I thought defensively we played great, you know, um, especially in that first half. You know, you look at the stats, you take the – uh, last minute 33 out right um, where we really aided them on 30 yards and penalties right um, gave up a, a lack of communication play right there at the end that gave them their touchdown which uh, upset me quite a bit because of the fact that I felt like it gave them momentum going into the halftime right um, but outside of that man we played a great half there you, you take they had a 79 yard drive uh, in that last minute 33. Even with that 79-yard drive, they finished with 68 total yards at half, minus one yards rushing. So uh, we, we had them at ne negative yards for the first half uh, mm -hmm. up until the last minute, 33. We'd only given up one first down. Uh, offensively, we were moving the ball, uh, got points on the board several times, missed a couple opportunities as well. Uh, but you know, I thought it was a really good first half for all of us. Well, it was a great half, to be honest with you. I mean, it was really exciting. To your point, the defense was just literally on fire until that very last drive, as you said. So to, uh, so what did you tell your team at halftime? And then kind of what happened as we got into the third quarter? Yeah, at halftime, I got everybody together. I was frustrated with them. You okay. know, I, and I, I wanted to make them known, uh, make it known that, you know, we played a really good half, yep. but that we also have to develop a killer instinct. We had the opportunity, in my opinion, to be up 21 nothing, to be up 24 nothing. Um, you know, I felt like we left points on the field yep. in that first half. And then, of course, with the defense playing so great up until that last minute, 33. You know, it's a third and ten. That was really a bad call on my part. Um, mm -hmm. we, we brought a, a blitz on that, got called for a pass interference on third and ten. Probably should have just kind of played it out and got off the field. But nonetheless, you know, we we played so well. And then to finish by giving up that drive and right. giving up a touchdown and keeping them in the game. I, I just wanted them to know that, like, this is still our game. But we have to go out and we have to develop that killer instinct. You know, we, we uh, defensively, they were going to get the ball. We, we played great. We needed to go out, get a stop, right. and then get the offense back out and, and stay hot. So uh, that was our message is that we have to uh, build upon that. We've got to tighten some things up, not leave points on the board, but really go out and finish the game, that it was still our game. We, we had the lead. It was still our game. We had to go out and finish. So what happened then is they put on 28 points in the second half. Yeah, obviously my halftime speech wasn't very good, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that, was, that was extremely frustrating. Um, we defensively, you know, we come out and they run the ball in two, two plays and, and have the lead. Right. And when you're dominating a game in the fashion that we did in that first half and really both, both sides of the ball, you know, we yep. were moving the ball pretty much at will kind of uh, – not converting on some situations uh, in that first half and then defensively doing so well that I think it caught everybody off guard, you know, and it was honestly just um, just little things that we didn't yeah. execute at the same level that we did in the first half um, and some things that we had to get adjusted on the sideline, um, some things that we had to get adjusted, honestly, after the fact, you know, in the film room on Monday. Right. Uh, some little things with our safeties, making calls that took them out of the run fit and that, that aided them in giving up big runs. It, right. You know, the first half we were very gap sound. 
for whatever reason, we come out in that, that drive and, uh, you know, give that up. And then mm -hmm. uh, missed, missed another coverage check, gave up a touchdown. So on back-to-back -back drives now, uh, we give up touchdowns. And uh, we, we got back to where we needed to be. We held them to where they needed to be for a while. And unfortunately, offense, we just couldn't quite get right. rolling until – uh, you know, the first play of the fourth quarter when Demo rips off a long run. Right. And all of a sudden now, at that time, it's 28 to 20. Right. And Yeah, still in the game, one score. Yeah, still in the game. And so at that time, you know, that's, again, where we just had – that that gave us a lot of uh, confidence yep. going into the fourth quarter. Defensively, we did a really good job of holding them. Unfortunately, offensively, we just couldn't uh, keep going, and we turned the ball over three times. and. Uh, gave up uh, a late touchdown where we they went unbalanced on us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the guys on the field didn't see it, right. didn't make the proper adjustment. We we didn't see it. Uh, could have taken a timeout otherwise. Right. Um, so you know, there's a lot of things, and the thing that I told them all afterwards is, you know, this starts with me. You know, at the top, I've got to be better. We as coaches have to prepare them better, and right. then, you know, there's there's onus all the way, onus and accountability all the way down. Absolutely. So with that coach, now this weekend, the team's one in five and you're set to take on Baker, who is five and one. And they are as as current as of today, they are receiving votes. So what have you told your team in preparation for after a, being a month away from here at Spartan Field? What have you told your team? Well, I think just continue to stay positive and understand the work that is necessary to go into winning. We, you know, we right. have to stay together. We have to continue to do our job at a high level on a more consistent basis. One of the things we talk about is we have had the lead uh, in four of the uh, games that we've played so far yeah, at halftime. Right. Yeah, four of the six we've had the lead at halftime. And um, I believe – well, one of them obviously being Clark, which right. which we won. But, right. you know, the other three, we we haven't been able to hang on and win. So, you know, if, if you change that and you're sitting there four or two just by holding on to a halftime lead. Right. So, you know, we talked a lot about, hey, what do they need? Like, what do you guys need from us at, uh, at halftime? We've got, got some decent ideas. You know, I think the thing I stress to them, they're like, coach, we need to make adjustments and checks. And we do that. There's no doubt. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I've stressed to them is that, you know, that's fan talk. You know, we're, <laughs> we're making in-game adjustments. Correct. And so, you know, there's times sometimes where, hey, we just got to keep doing what we're doing and, and the guys just have to keep believing and doing their job, you know, and, and that goes top down. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is just learning how to win, learning how to finish. What what ends up happening is we're not in that situation a lot right. to where we have the lead. We've got to we've got to learn that confidence. And like I said, build on that killer instinct. Absolutely. So as you look at the tape on Baker, what do you see and what, you know, could you let our Spartan fans know what we should be looking for, obviously, this Saturday at one? Yeah, I mean, defensively, they're they're really good. They're, they've are they got some talented players. Uh, I know some returning, like, all-conference guys from yep. the year before. They've got, uh, you know, nothing – they don't do anything crazy, but they're very well coached. Okay. They're very disciplined. They run. They tackle. They're physical. Um, so, you know, they're – kind of what we would see in in the mid states and what we've seen th thus far in in the yeah. heart of America. Uh, offensively, you know, I think there's some opportunities for us uh, on defense, but they are very good at quarterback. Their quarterback is is a talented athlete. Um, he runs the ball well. He's he throws the ball well. You know, you have to be very disciplined in your pass rush because right. he can get out and hurt you with his legs. Uh, they've got several wide receivers, including a tight end that is really talented. Their tight end leaves their team in reception. So yep. um, that creates some issues because um, they they don't ever take him off the field. So, right. you know, they'll split him out as a wide out. They'll bring him in tight as a tight end and they'll run the ball. And so, you know, we've got to look at our matchups and, and things that we like. And, you know, I like our game plan going into it, but we've got to be able to corral the quarterback on defense. We've got to be able to, uh, you know, make sure that number 88, their tight end, uh, doesn't have a banner day. You know, we've got to right. make sure we know where he is. And there's other guys also that are very talented. So it's not like they're a one-trick pony. Well, not at all. But, you know, you know this from through the years. You've had some outstanding tight ends. The same thing other teams have them prepare for us is you can find that matchup pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. And so defensively, you're always going to have to pay attention to what scheme you're in so that 88 – you've got the right matchup that you want so that maybe you don't have a certain linebacker against him that maybe isn't as good at, you know, pass coverage, but he's outstanding at run coverage, right? So having to pay attention to that anytime you have a tight end that can be that versatile 
can present problems for the team. Yeah, and I think the I think we've got a good handle on that. Yeah, you know, we've got some people that that we like that we feel like can cover, but yeah. you know we got to go out and do our job. I think right. they've got a really talented running back, so uh, they're they're very multi dimensional on offense. And then, like I said, defensively, you know they they are very sound in what they do, and we've got to make sure that we go out and execute. You know, our offensive line continues to open holes for our backs, and that we can that we can stay. Uh, very multi-dimensional and balanced in our attack as well. Absolutely. So, you know, Coach, with that, we know it's going to be a pink out game because it is the only game you actually are playing in October, which is really crazy because yeah. normally you have like I don't know, three of them, it seems, right? Yeah. So with that, it's a pink out game for certainly bringing more awareness to breast cancer awareness for October. But if you could give us an update on your wife, because we've featured her, you know, yeah. for several years, certainly – with her, with certainly her uh, battle with breast cancer. Give us a kind of quick update on that. Yeah, I mean, God is good. You know, she's doing very well. Uh, went through all that treatment. Um, it seems like yesterday, but at the yeah. same time, it's starting to be more and more years. And, and uh, you know, she has her checkups, and the checkups come back uh, clean and, yeah. and good. And, you know, that's what we want. So uh, she's doing excellent, running around, uh, chasing kids while I'm coaching. And, uh you know, it's it's a fun time. She's, I think, coaching every team that our kids play on now. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of fun for her. But, yeah, you know, like I said, we're just very blessed. You know, uh, we've had some issues with our son with uh, his, uh, you know, having hydrocephalus and, and right. her dealing with um, the breast cancer. But, you know, so far every, everybody's doing good and healthy, and that's what we like. Well, that's a praise God report because <laughs> I can tell you I remember – you know, that, that Michelle was so strong that she let us interview her at halftime when she didn't have any hair and she had a baseball head on. Yeah. That says something about trying to do something bigger than herself to really spread awareness. And I'll never forget it because, as I've said to her and you, it was definitely, at first, it was one of the hardest interviews I've ever done. I've never done any, anything like that. But once we got into it, you know that God is good. And yeah. you can just hear the peace in her heart and in your heart as you guys are bonding together. And certainly the MBU community coming you know, just wrapping their arms around around you two and her, and it's just pretty darn amazing. As well as Mary Smith, yeah. you know, Tom Smith's wife, you know, our former athletic director, same thing as, as she went through her bout as well. So, so, yeah, praise God for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think the, the biggest thing that we want is that, you know, she's one of many, right. you know, unfortunately. Right. Um, and so, you know, just having that awareness, having – those checks and those regular checkups and everything is so important because I think, you know, one thing with Michelle's situation is catching it relatively early. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's what, that's what we're really hoping to do, you know, with having the pink out game. And, and right. I know a lot of other sports do that and, and that's great. I mean, and the thing I know the NFL right now that, you know, they're doing a stand up to cancer that uh, major mm -hmm. league baseball does that because, you know, breast cancer is one of a, many types Correct. of cancer yep. and, and none of them are good and they're all hard on the family but uh, you know we're blessed to be doing well and uh, yeah. you know blessed that God took care of her and took care of us in that time but there's uh, a lot of other people dealing with that stuff and you know our thoughts and prayers are with them absolutely so with that coach the last thing I have for you I understand that the uh, the College of Business and Entrepreneurship are sponsoring an event and I know you had a chance to see the promo for it so uh what do you think about uh, this T-Rex run where we're going to have 10 people putting on some T-Rex suits and they're going to race for 50 yards to find out who's the fastest T-Rex on turf? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was coming up with something new, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think it'd be I think it'd be a lot of fun, you know. We'll we'll be uh we won't be able to see it, so hopefully they film it on the uh live stream and we can go back and watch it, but uh you know, it'll be fun for people. I'm sure uh, there'll be some good crashes and spills. Oh, well, it's going to be awesome. All I can tell you is you can certainly, Spartan fans, if you come to the game, you can certainly sign up. There'll be a big table for it. You won't miss it, trust me. I've seen the signage for it. It is huge. And you can sign up to participate. It's going to be at halftime, roughly around the 15-minute mark. Uh, but you'll get in your suits and all that roughly about five minutes to go in the in the second quarter. But it's going to be kind of a nice, fun halftime you know, entertainment, doing something different there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And certainly, again, sponsored by the College of Business and entrepreneurship, which I'm part of, and I'm proud of that. I yeah. certainly love uh, everything that, that uh, what our uh, college does for business. And I just love the fact that we're just trying to do more outreach kind of fun yeah. things. 
Absolutely, absolutely. It'll be a good time, and we have great, great uh, crowds always. You know, it'll be fall break, but uh, you know, I know we'll still have good uh, student attendance and good turnout from our fans. Yeah. Well, Spartan fans, as you know, if you cannot make it here live in person this Saturday at one o'clock, you can always catch us on the Spartan Digital Network. As game time again is this Saturday at one o'clock for Coach B. I'm Guy Danhoff. We want to thank you for watching it all right here on the Spartan Digital Network. Thank you.